today I want us to look at number patterns. Remember that when we talk of patterns, they are only divided into three parts. We've got what we call the arithmetic sequence. Secondly, we've got the geometric sequence. And thirdly, we've got what we call a quadratic sequence. Quadratic sequence, think of the quadratic equation. AX squared plus BX plus C. It takes that format. I said our patterns are divided into three. Number one is the arithmetic sequence. Secondly, we got, we got the geometric sequence. And lastly, we have what we call the quadratic sequence. These are the three types of sequences that I want us to look at today. Now, how do you identify these sequences? For example, if we're talking about the arithmetic sequence, the only way that we can see the arithmetic sequence, it should have a common difference, a common difference. Which we refer it to it as D. The geometric sequence will of course have what we call the common ratio common ratio, which we refer to as R. Then the third one, the quadratic sequence, will have uh, the common second difference, not the first second difference, which we refer to as the second common difference. This one has got the first common difference, the arithmetic sequence, while the third one, the quadratic sequence, will have the second common difference. Magwen Zinjan, he's in Lezo For example, if we have this sequence, two, four, six, eight, and so on and so forth, what is the first term here? The first term is what we see. It is two in this particular case. The second term is a four. The third term will be three. Whenever we're talking about the first term, we can refer it in this way. Term one simply means the first term. So T2 will mean the second term. T3 will, means, will mean the, the third term. What is the common difference? Difference comes from subtraction. So we're subtracting here. When we say eight minus six, what is the answer there? Eight minus six, it is two. But what is six minus four? 6 minus 4 is also 2, and what is 4 minus 2, it is also 2. What do we notice here? Whenever I subtract this from this, I get this. This from that, I get the same thing. This from that, I get the same thing. So this one has got the common, this sequence has got the common difference. In this particular case, it is 2. That is what we refer to as D. It is the first common difference. It came out from the first line when we are subtracting. It is the difference, common difference, this minus that. It is the same number, this one is the, it's the same number, so it's a common uh, difference. In this particular case, it is two. Right, <clears throat> so generally, the first term, we refer to it as A. A, the first letter of the alphabet, it is A. So I'm here to say to you, the first term is referred to as A. In this particular sequence, what will be our A? It will be two. The next thing I want us to talk about are the general terms. All these sequences have got a general term, the way that we see them. The arithmetic, the arithmetic sequence, the general term is Tn is equals to A plus into N minus one D. This is very important. This is called the general term of the arithmetic sequence. So is the geometric sequence. It, holds, it also have its own geometric, uh, it also have its own general term. The general term for the geometric sequence will be Tn is equals to AR to the power N minus one. This is the geometric, uh, this is ge the general term of a geometric sequence. Then what will be the general term of a quadratic sequence? It also has its own general term, which is Tn is equals to An squared plus Bn 
plus C. Ah, look at this one. Similar to AX squared plus BX plus C. It's almost the same thing. All that we call them quadratic, quadratic that come from the quadratic equation. So it's a quadratic uh, sequence, general term. So this becomes important. So you'll be using a lot of this formula when you respond to questions that you'll be asked in any exercise. Right, where does this come from? Where does that come from? It is important that we must understand that generally the first term in an arithmetic sequence we refer to it as A. From here to here, this will be the second term. How did we move from the first term to the second term? And how did we move from the first term to the third term? And so on and so forth from the first term to the next term. But before that, it is very easy to see what is T1. In this case, the value of T1 will be 2 because T1 simply means the first term. The next question, what is T3? It is very easy to see that 1, 2, 3. So the third term in this particular case would be 6. But if I ask you a question, what is T256? You cannot get that off by heart. Off I look at the formula. This one, the general term. Yen is called Caesar, which is calculated in number in gold. Joe would make it was a sequence. Give our bunny term, yes, 156. You cannot get that off by heart. You've got to use the formula to get that. But yeah, formula seven, the ganjal. There is no need for me to use the formula. Oh, my goodness, tell me one, two, three, four. If I'm asking you the fifth term here, there's no need for you to go and jump onto the formula because you can see that this is two, four, six, eight. So the fifth term will be 10. There's no need of a formula there, but we only use it when we, when, when, when we use big numbers, when you cannot get it off by heart. Let's do this thing. If we're saying the first term is generally called A, so what would be the second term? What is T2? T2, how did we move from this one to the second term? We added the common difference. What is our common difference in this particular case? It is two. So it's two plus two. Two plus two, that gave us four. So in order for us, for us to move to the second term, so that's how we find the second term generally in all the sequences. So to find the second term, you've got to take the first term and you add the second term. That's the, I mean, the, the common difference. So all the, 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 the second terms in general, in, in arithmetic sequence, you take the first term and you add the common difference. Then how would we go about finding the third term. Remember the topic that we're doing is number patterns. We're studying patterns here. <coughs> term three, that is the term three. So how did we move from the first term into the third, into the third term? From the first term, we added the first different, we added the common difference, and we added another one. So from the first term to the third term, how many common differences do we add? We add two of them. From here, we add the first common difference and, and another common difference. So we added our common difference, our two. So the third term generally will be A plus D plus another D, which is 2D. So that's generally how we find the third term. As, as we do this, I want you to be able to pick up the patterns. The second term is A plus D. The third term is A plus 2D. What would be the fourth term? Look at T4. This one, two, three, four. This will be the fourth term. So it will be equals to A plus what? We are moving from here to the fourth term. So it's A plus O plus D, O plus B, O plus start. So the fourth term would be A plus 3D. As we write this, I want you to be able to pick up the patterns there. Pick up the patterns. Look at the, 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 the first one, the, the second one. The first one is easy. T1 is A. The second one, it's T2 is A plus D. Look here. T2, A plus D. How many Ds here? One. But what is this? T2. Look at the next one. T3 is equal to A plus how many Ds? 2D. T3, 2D. Look at this one. T4 would be equal to A plus 3D. Can you predict what T10 will be? T10 will be what? Without working it out, I know that T3 is A plus 2D. T4 is what? A plus 3D. T10 will be what then? I know you will say it is A plus 9D. But the question is, how did you get, how did you find the 9D? Ah, this helped you to see that there you will have 4 minus 1 to get this one. To get this 2, it's this number minus 1. 
To get this one, it's this number minus one. Oh, in other words, this is not how you, you get it. Let's move on from here for a while. So, in other words, how did you find T10? T10 was actually equals to A plus, so this number helped me, which was in this case 10. From that number, we subtracted 1 to get this 9, then there's D. So it means that this, this became A plus 10 minus 1, it is 9D. That's how we find it. But what if you're given any term? For example, if you're given TN, N stands for any number. TN with equals to what then? If I'm given TN, I know that this guides me. I know that that guided me for me to get 9. I said 10 minus 1, and I got that 9. So TN would be the first term, A plus whatever number that I have here, minus 1. In this case, it is N minus 1, and next to it, I must have D, R. This is where the general term comes from. This is where that formula, which we call it the general term, actually comes from. So we must know where it actually comes from before we even use it. Right, let's, let's talk more about the end term or the general term. Now, don't get confused when the exam calls this the end term. So when you talk about the end term, you must know that we mean the same thing as the general term. Number two, when you talk about the last term, you must know that you're talking about the same thing. So TN, nth term, and the last term is one and the same thing. We should other, we'll use this term, we'll also use this one meaning one is the same thing. So the last term, the formula to get it is A plus N into minus one D. Or the nth term, it is the same thing. It is the general term. So when you talk about the nth term, we're talking about the general term. Remember that we're talking about the arithmetic sequence. Now, <coughs> talking about the, uh, the, 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 the arithmetic sequence, we don't only talk about the general term. We also have to move on into sum. Thank you. Mm -hmm.